What is going on everyone? Benjamin Noak with the Small Mouth Experience coming back at you guys with another tips and tricks video. What I'm trying to do with these is keep these very bait and time of year specific to things that'll work where you guys are fishing this time of year to chase big smallmouth bass. And today is one of my favorite springtime baits that catches giants. You guys saw me catch some big fish on this in my last uh, fishing video and that is a lipless crankbait but if there's something you guys want to see in future videos find that comment section let me know what you guys want to see in future videos because i'll have those coming your way very shortly now i have a hair jig video a spy bait video and a drop shot video in the queue getting ready to be made and posted to get you guys ready for that pre-spawn that spawn and that post-spawn bite which will be coming up here in these next couple of weeks so those are things that are in the queue in the works going to be coming at you guys very shortly the way i'm going to do this as i say in every video break it down by where when and how and then we're going to move into the bait and gear that i have confidence in to go out and chase giant smallmouth bass everywhere that I fish. Let's start with the where. Where am I fishing a lipless crankbait? And for me, the effectiveness comes in its versatility. The ability to fish this thing around a variety of different types of cover and structure and still get big fish to bite. You can fish it around rock, grass, open water, even around light wood really effectively and trigger big fish. And that's what makes a lipless crankbait so good. Now, typically I'm focusing on moderate depths and shallower, like 15 foot of water or less. That is where I really find a lipless crankbait shines, especially the ways that I'm going to be talking about how I fish this bait. And we're going to change our retrieve based on the type of cover that we're fishing, which we'll cover here in just a minute. When am I fishing this bait? Well, for me, a lipless crankbait really shines when bass are keyed in on bait fish and feeding really aggressively. Typically, that's the springtime and the fall time. And there are ways you can fish it during the summer and still catch fish, but the spring and the fall are really where I find this to be the most effective. And the reason for that is those bass are really in their optimal feeding temperatures, keying in on bait fish, keying in on this concept of getting really fat and feeding. And that's when I find a lipless to catch the most amount of fish for me. So spring and in the fall, is where a lipless really truly shines when I'm out there on the water. Since we've talked about the where and the when, now we're gonna move into the how. And this is really when you guys are gonna to start to notice the versatility of this bait, because we're gonna talk about four different styles of retrieves that you can use based on the cover or the depth that you're fishing. And the way we're gonna start with this thing is start with the fastest retrieve and work our way down to the slowest retrieve that I found to be effective with the lipless crankbait. And the very first approach that I wanna talk about is just your straight cast and reel. All you're gonna do is cast that bait out there, let it sink a little bit in the water, and use your reel handle and just reel that bait back to the boat. Now you can throw some rod twitches in there. You can throw some reel flares in to get that bait to do different things in the water, whether you kill it and let it fall, or you speed that bait up to kind of give it some difference in your retrieve. Just your straight cast and reel is a really effective approach, especially around shallow water conditions. The reason for that is you can cover a lot of water really quickly. You can pinpoint where these fish are located. And because typically you're fishing a rattling style bait, you draw fish from a long ways that are curious and wanting to come up and eat that bait. The way that I consider this or what I would compare this to is like a swim bait. Basically a small swim bait coming through the water looks super natural, draws those fish in, especially in shallow water situations or over some sort of vegetation and gets fish to bite. Fastest retrieve, but also catches absolutely giant fish. My buddy Adam Valley, he does this up in Algoma County, Algoma Country, whatever it's called and catches absolute giants with just a straight cast and reel retrieve for big pre-spawners around shallow water situations. Now, as fish get a little bit more lethargic or if you're fishing around more heavy cover grassy situations, I like to go to a yo-yo approach. And this is where you're gonna hear a lot of people talk about when they're fishing a lipless crankbait is a yo-yo approach. Now, what this means is you're gonna cast that bait out there around typically some sort of shallow water grassy situation and you're gonna let that bait start to sink down. And when you feel that bait with your rod start to catch in the grass, you're just gonna lift up. So cast it out, let it sink. Once you feel that bait hit the grass, lift it up. And what's gonna happen is these treble hooks on this bait are gonna to start to get into the grass. And when you lift it, it's gonna give it like a yo-yo sort of motion, up and down sort of motion. And I don't have the net out. Oh, God, that's a giant. Look at how she ate that. Look at how she ate that trap. Frickin' gone, that's a mega. This is a really good way to trigger reaction bites from those fish that are hanging out in the grass. You're gonna let that bait kind of tick the top of the grass, pop it free, and when you do that, a lot of those fish that are sitting in the grass kind of waiting for the bait fish to swim by, 
can't help but come out and tag that bait. You're going to get a lot of reaction strikes this way from those fish that maybe are a little bit more pressured or hanging around that grass that don't necessarily want to come out and eat like a quick moving bait. This is a really good approach. Now, yo-yo retrieve can also be used in open water situations. Again, sort of shallower water situations when that bite gets a little bit tougher. Um, but it's just a really effective approach to get fish to bite. I'll do this on the Great Lakes a lot, especially when I'm covering big flats and they don't want that straight retrieve. I'll cast, make a long cast and use a yo-yo retrieve. And this is particularly effective in the summertime months when those fish are keyed in on bait fish, water temps are a little bit warmer and they don't want to necessarily come up and tag a really quick moving bait. A yo-yo retrieve can work really effectively. So yo-yo, second technique, Probably the most popular style of retrieve with the lipless crankbait catches really big fish, both largemouth and smallmouth actually. Now the lift and drop, this is probably my favorite approach. And the reason for that is because I can use it in zero foot of water, like no water at all, or I can fish it out to like 15, 20 ish foot of water, open water situations when those fish are on bottom, especially in the pre-spawn and early spring, and they don't want to hit a tube or a blade bait. The, the lift and drop is a really effective approach. And this is what I've been using in recent videos when I've been catching all these big fish. I'll cast that bait out, let it sink all the way to the bottom. And once it's on bottom, I'll just make a slow lift with my rod tip, get that bait to vibrate and fall back down. It's very similar to my blade bait approach. Long cast, lift till I feel it vibrate and let it fall back down. Lift till I feel it vibrate and let it fall. This is where some of the baits that I'm gonna talk about are gonna be really key. You're gonna use a little bit heavier style bait. You wanna keep it down there on the bottom especially in that deeper water, you're going to want a compact bait for big smallmouth bass that have smaller mouths. So the bait selection when you're doing this approach is going to be a lot more critical than maybe some of these other approaches. And finally, the last approach, and this is something my buddy uh, Bass Quest, Caleb Bell, absolutely smashed my face in with last year, and I couldn't figure out what he was doing, is basically just a cast and drag or flopping technique. This is something that I call the flip flop, the flip flop in a trap. What this does is essentially cause this bait to sit in one place, but still make a commotion flipping and flopping back and forth on the bottom. Draws fish from a long ways, really effective in clear water or very tough situations when those fish are very keyed in on very, very small areas. How many times can I say very in one sentence? But um, when they're very keyed in on <laughs> certain areas a flip-flop approach is a good way to catch them my buddy caleb bell smashed me on this because i was doing my lift and drop and he's sitting over there basically dragging his lipless and catching them it doesn't no that's it's not flip-flopping oh my gosh dude <laughs> Evidently, flip flop and a trap in circles. That's a big one, dude. I, I'll tell you guys why I'm laughing. We were joking about flipping a trap, and all you do basically is put pressure on the rod. It's something tactical bass and talks about Caleb's done for a while. And he was doing it to show me, and uh, when he was doing it, he got a bite. So I was goofing around doing it and I got this bite. So the way you're going to do this, you're going to cast this bait out, let it sink to bottom. And once it's down there, fish it almost like a jig. Caleb likes to put his hand on the rod blank. I'll keep my hand on the reel and just use a slight lifting motion. You don't want that bait to come off the bottom. All you want that thing to do down there when it's laying on bottom on its side, kind of lift up and fall, lift up and fall, lift up and fall. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but when you do that, a lot of these heavier baits have a lot of rattles in them. It's still going to rattle and make a commotion on the bottom and draw those fish in. They'll come over to it, key in on it, be curious. And when that bait's not moving a lot, sits in front of them a long time, they want to eat it and they want to kill it. So that flopping or dragging approach is really effective in cold water, tough situations when those fish don't necessarily want to eat. They can't help it when it's sitting in front of their face, making a lot of commotion and drawing those fish in. This is something Tactical Bassin has also done some videos on, but flopping a trap is super effective when those fish are lethargic and don't want to eat a faster moving bait like a lift and drop, yo-yo, or straight retrieve. Try this out and you'll catch fish. Another good place to do this is when those fish are keying in on tube baits. If they shut off on that tube, if they stop eating a tube dragged along the bottom, you can take a lipless and cover that same water. And because it's a little bit more aggressive, it's a little bit louder presentation, those fish will typically key back in on this bait and you can get a couple extra bites when they wouldn't eat a tube. So 
those are my four different approaches, the four different ways that I use this bait to be effective in a variety of different conditions with a lipless crankbait. Now let's move into the physical baits and the gear that I'm using to be effective as well. So let's start by talking about the rod that I'm using. Now I like a longer rod overall and the reason for that is I'm typically fishing cleaner water situations. I want to get that bait as far away from me as possible, make long casts, and a lot of times longer rods are a little bit more forgiving. Um, even if they're the same power as a shorter rod, they tend to have a little bit slower action. So the rod I'm using is a seven foot four Temple Fork Outfitters crankbait rod. It's a medium heavy, moderate action. When you're fishing a bait with treble hooks, I like to fish a moderate, slower action because it helps keep those fish pinned. A lot of times in that video that I just posted, those fish would just get one treble hook in, in their face and, and having that slower power or slower action rod helps keep that treble hook stay pinned because the rod's a lot more forgiving. It bounces back to normal a lot slower. And so you can play those fish a lot more, a lot more effectively on a slow or a moderate power rod. I saw that on pan optics. Oh my God, that's big. I gotta get him on that first jump. He's just barely got this bait. Don't, don't. Oh, he came off. Five pounds, eight ounces. Giant, giant. Really anything seven foot to seven foot six inches long is perfect. If you guys have a crankbait style rod, doesn't matter if it's seven foot, seven and a half foot, go out there, throw a lipless around with one of those retrieves, it'll work perfectly. But I really prefer that seven foot four, medium heavy rod. Now the reel that I'm using is either a six speed or a seven speed gear ratio reel. It doesn't particularly matter. The reel I'm using right now is a Luz BB1 Pro, six four to one gear ratio. And I like straight fluorocarbon. A lot of times up here in the Midwest, I'm not fishing around really heavy grass like it would be on Gunnersville or like it would be on Rayburn or some of those Southern reservoirs. Um, and so I like straight fluorocarbon. With that slower rod, I just think this overall setup is really a good way to get a lot of big fish to bite. So it's a six, four to one with 14 pound test fluorocarbon line. And uh, that is my overall setup. This is where things will start to get really interesting. We probably have differing opinions, but there's a couple baits that I really rely on for different situations and scenarios. The first one I want to talk about, and this has become a theme of my channel, is a Duo Realis bait. Duo Realis makes a very good dragging or lift and drop style lipless crankbait. And this is the Duo Realis 68 G-Fix. Now what that G-Fix means, it's a heavier model with the same size body profile. So it's 68 millimeters long, small profile, super, super narrow. And because it's a heavier body profile, it will stay on bottom really well. Another thing that I like about this bait is because of the way it's weighted, when you cast it out, wherever it lands, it's gonna fall straight to the bottom. There's no glide, there's no horizontal movement. It's basically just a straight vertical um, drop with this bait. So what you're gonna do is typically I'm gonna use this for a lift and drop or a drag approach. It's also a smaller body profile very thin profile so you can fish it really effectively with that lift and drop approach because that body has very little resistance so when you go to lift this thing you don't have to lift it very far before it starts to move now the color selection on this bait this is the natural gill color or ghost gill color I like this in really clean water situations the other one that i really like is the tule perch color now the tule perch this is the one that i'm going to use most often from duo i like this it has a little bit more of a darker body sides but it's also a little bit of flash. So it looks like gobies, looks like perch, looks like a variety of different types of natural forage down there on the bottom, catches big fish. If I was going to St. Clair with one lipless crankbait, this would be the one that I'm using. This Thule perch color and the Duo Realis 68 G Fix, super effective. And there's actually a video where I went out with shredders and smashed them on this last year. And I'm gonna leave that linked up here in the corner for you guys to go check out. I'll also try to overlay some footage throughout this video. I think so. There you go. Good job. Thank you, dude. Look how fat that fish is. Giant fat fish. My next favorite bait for the lift and drop approach or the dragging approach 
is a Lucky Craft LV500. Now the Lucky Craft LV500, this is the bait that Caleb absolutely smashed my face in with. The reason this bait's so effective is it's heavy body for a very small profile. This is basically a half ounce profile size bait, but it's a three quarter ounce bait. So it's a heavy body profile in a small size. And you can keep that bait down on bottom and fish it on the bottom really effectively. This again for me is going to be very effective for that lift and drop approach or the dragging approach um, when I want to keep that bait down low in the water column. My two favorite colors in this are the ghost minnow, which is what this is, or the smallmouth bass color. Again, I like those really natural colors. A lot of times when I'm doing that deeper water lift and drop or that deeper water flopping approach, I like those natural style colors, sort of translucent, looks like the actual type of forage that those fish are looking at and keying in on because when they have a really good look at that bait, I think using a natural profile like this gets bigger fish to bite. So ghost minnow, smallmouth bass color, smashes big fish in the LV500. Now this is a, a staple lipless crankbait. It's the one that gave all lipless crankbaits the nickname the trap and that is a Bill Lewis rattle trap. A rattle trap still has a very predominant spot in my lipless crankbait box and the reason for that is because you can fish it really shallow, really effectively. That flat face comes through cover when you're lifting and dropping this bait on the bottom but it still comes through grass really well because of the corners on the edges of that bait. Because this bait is squared off on the front, think of it like a, a chatter bait or a vibrating jig where it has those squared off edges, it rips from that grass really, really clean. So where I find this to be the most effective is either a straight retrieve or some sort of ripping through grass or dragging it on the bottom. That front squared off face helps it come through cover really effectively, just like a square bill, just like uh, any sort of bait that comes through heavy cover well has a squared off face, protects your hooks, helps it come through that and navigate through cover, not get hung up very much and catches absolute giants. It's also a very loud bait. So it draws fish from a long ways away. Like if you were to get underwater when someone's fishing a lipless crankbait, especially a rattle trap, you could probably hear them from dam to dam all the way across the lake. Super, super loud. Now the colors that I like to use, really one of two style of colors. In the springtime, dirtier water situations, I like to go with a craw color. This is the candy craw. This one has caught I can't even tell you how many fish, 50 to 100 fish, super, super great bait. You guys can see I've basically worn the paint out on this thing, dragging it around, fishing it around, caught me a bunch of big fish on a craw color. This is really a springtime color for me. Now when I move into the summer and I'm fishing for some of those smallmouth bass on the Great Lakes, and I like to use that straight retrieve, a chrome blue back is a great color. On the Great Lakes, I'm not sure what it is, if it looks like you know a bunch of the minnows that they're feeding on that chrome blue back especially when it's sunny out like it is today is a great color all you do cast that thing out there straight retrieve you can fish it around six foot of water eight foot of water those fish will come up out of deeper water and tag that thing chrome blue back is a phenomenal 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 color when you're fishing for smallmouth bass in moderately clear water when it's sunny outside now we're going to talk about one of the most popular lipless crankbaits over the past couple of years and that is the strike king Red Eye Shad. The Strike King Red Eye Shad is notorious for being an effective yo-yo retrieve bait. The reason for that is it has a rounded off belly and just the overall body profile. Now, I like to fish this around grass. It comes through grass pretty decent, but really my favorite approach with this is either the straight retrieve or the yo-yo retrieve. Now, I really like that yo-yo retrieve because this actually has a shimmy on the fall. So when you stop this bait, when you kill this bait on the yo-yo, it'll shimmy down lift it up shimmies shimmies on the fall it's constantly moving it has constant action versus let's say your lipless or your your rattle trap style bait this tends to fall just straight down to the bottom when you kill that bait it'll just fall straight doesn't have much movement your strike king red eye shad will actually have a shimmy on the fall my favorite colors in this are either this traditional sexy shad profile or again chrome blue back great lakes colors chrome blue back absolutely kills it when you get a little bit of overcast when things start to look a little bit nasty i'll go to that white color silhouettes a little bit better when they're still keying in on a lipless crankbait um, and they shut off on the chrome blue back the sexy shag color something with a white base is a really good go-to uh, when they're not able to key in on that chrome blue back quite as effectively finally we're going to talk about a couple op honorable mentions we're going to add this one to the list because um, until I guess late last spring, I hadn't caught a fish on this bait. I think it's relatively new to the market. 
That is a Jackal TN70 and a Jackal TN60. The TN60 is a half ounce bait in a very small profile and that's why it's getting included on my list. That TN60 half ounce, really small body profile, super easy for smallmouth to eat and it's a really good springtime bait. You gotta think in the springtime, a lot of the forage that those bass are keying in on is really, really small. This half ounce bait you can fish in moderate depths really effectively, keep it on bottom and um, trigger those big fish to bite even in that small profile. Another thing that I like is it has tungsten on the bill of this bait and a flat spot right here. So when this bait is stopped, in theory, it's supposed to sit nose down with the tail up. This is gonna help your hookup ratio because when that fish eats that bait, it's gonna get those hooks a lot more effectively than maybe something sitting on the side. So just a really cool design on this bait. And this is the Disc Knocker TN60. What that is is a one knocker style um, of lipless crankbait. Really, I'm gonna play with that, kind of mix in a one knocker or a rattling bait. Um, but for me, it's not as effective or not as important as the actual bait choice itself. So the Jackal TN60 small profile half ounce bait catches big fish. The other one that I really like is the Jackal TN70. Just like my blade bait approach, I'm looking for something with a little bit heavier body size than traditional baits with a small profile. So this is a 5 8 ounce bait in basically a half ounce profile. Really like this. This is the one that I caught that 5 in 5.6 or 5.7 pound fish in my last video on. Catches big fish, triggers big bites, and gets a lot of those big ones to the boat. So those are my baits. That is the gear that I use to trigger big fish to bite on a lipless crankbait. You want some sort of cranking rod. You want a medium to high speed gear ratio, six or seven speed gear ratio bait casting reel, 14 to 17 pound test fluorocarbon line, and one of these baits, and you'll go out and catch big smallmouth no matter where you live, as long as there's smallmouth swimming around in the body of water that you're fishing. If there's any questions or comments, anything you guys want to see in future videos, please let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate all the support, all the love on these tips and tricks videos, so keep it coming. Thank you guys for everything that you do, and as always, take care, tell lines. God bless. Pursue passion.